I have a future that cannot be fractured because it is structured by the scriptures. I have divinity in my mentality. I am a general to my generation. Celebrate God's word. You may be seated. Welcome to the second service of this great day. Now I have an intelligent question to ask us in defense of brother uncle Jacob. In defense of uncle Jacob. And the question is did Jacob actually steal the birthright? I'm preaching teaching in the defense of Uncle Jacob, the son of Isaac, whose brother was Esau of the loins of Rachel. Romans chapter number 9, I ask for heavenly audience for earthly utility by grace and mercy. That these lips of clay will speak precisely with precision, accuracy, inspiration, we speak with revelation and depth. That grace will be released from my vocal cord to affect everyone in place of trying to fulfill prophecy today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Prophecy is a godly weight only carried by faith. Prophecy is a godly weight only being carried by faith practitioners. When prophecy comes on you, it's ginger's reaction from hell. When prophecy is released upon you, it ginger's reactions from family members. Your life is not a target until you become God's target. Your life is not in any act of attack by men, demons, hell, until God makes you his priority. So in defense of Jacob. And it's important for us to have a people that will defend us even after we must have come and gone. It's important for you to lay down a legacy that will become a school or institution after your departure. You are not here to live forever physically. So what you do now goes on a long way to writing your history. It's forbidden to repeat history. It's of God to make history. When you begin to repeat history, that is to say you have not learned from history. Say with me in defense of Jacob. When God gives a word over you, hell will look out for you. People don't know the cost of manifestation. They don't know what it takes for dreams to be realized. It is not the day you slept with your wife that delivery comes. There are processes for delivery. It takes nine months. If there is proper enactment of the semen and the egg. Else there is need for a repeat of it. You don't expect something and not have it. I said to you this last week. If you want to write it down. That miracles don't go to where they are needed. Miracles go to where they are expected. Expectation is a pulling force. Expectation is a spiritual element that pulls to you what is being expected. So if you don't expect a better life, nothing pulls it towards you. It pulls, it's, it's a pulling force. So the Bible says that the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut off and it shall be granted. It's not enough to be righteous. Of course, righteousness is a gift. Of God obtainable by faith. You are righteous, justified by faith. You can receive nothing except is given to you from above. A man can receive nothing except is given from above. 
And when above gives you anything, there is no power on earth capable to take in away what, when, what above has given to you. So let's wait until the above releases it. Again, a man can receive nothing except is given from above. And the only way you can receive is when your faith is in check. Faith can only operate within the confines of what grace has made available. So look out for what grace has produced or provided and release your faith. Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing in by the word of God. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing in by the word of God. In defense of Jacob. Questions to be asked. Did Jacob really steal the birthright? Number two. Was Jacob a trickster? Was he, as it were today, a 419? Was Jacob that which they called him? Are you that which they called you? Did Jacob really manipulate his brother? So I'm doing this in the face of Jacob. I'm going to sow a seed wherever Jacob is right now in heaven. He will be glad in that somebody is running his course. Wherever they have tagged you wrong today, God will raise a people to stand in defense of you. Yeah. Romans chapter number 8 and from verse 9. For this is the word of promise. At this time will I come and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac. Okay, so we're talking about Rebekah, not Rachel, as it was said before. For the children, verse 11, please look at that scripture so closely. For the children being not yet born, but their destinies had been predetermined. Some don't understand when we talk about predestination, whom God wants to do for, he perfects everything even before that person gets to be born. Why? God plans his job. Two, planning removes stress. God does not dumble into what he had not projected and prepared for. Here, Look at verse 11. Everybody read with me. For the children being not yet born. Say it again. For the children. Neither having done any good or evil. That the purpose of God according to election might stand not of works but of him that call it. But the children being not yet born. Neither having done any good or evil they had not begun to live a life where they were required to be given a mark they were not born yet please listen to me that's why i can predict by god's word what will become of you in two years even before the two years come we have run into two years by the word of prophecy prophecy is not just about the past it's about the present and the future so now I prophesy, your future is glorious. Amen. Nothing will hamper your future in the name of Jesus. Amen. Conclusively in the book of Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, I know the thoughts that I am thinking towards you, meaning that God is thinking about you right now. God is mindful of you. For the children be not yet born. Please underline that. For the children be not yet born, neither have they done any evil or good. They had not lived on earth yet. So life begins actually in the spirit. God knows everything about you before the formation in your mother's womb. He says to Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter number one, he said, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. And I sanctified you and ordained you to be a prophet. So, 
Your profession requires an ordination. You cannot become outside ordination. When we talk about ordination, we're talking about the processing of God emptying himself on you to carry out the activities ordained and designed by God for you. Do you know this? It's funny to think that it's only pastors that are required to be ordained or ministers or prophets or apostles. No. Every individual got to be ordained. What is ordination? God emptying himself on you to carry out heaven's functions. Jeremiah, before I, before I formed you in your mother's womb, remember Jeremiah chapter 1? He said, I knew you because I knew you. I separated you to ordain you. I separated you. So ordination requires a separation. Ordination requires an isolation. But in God, when God decides to use you, the devil will you want to use you too. If you are not a tool in the hands of God, the devil cannot create anything. So God would have finished creating you. The devil want to use what God had created. Most of the times you are pliable, you yield to the devil. But who you yield yourself to, you have become a part of it. I forbid you to fail. I forbid you to fall. I forbid your business to crumble. By reason of ordination, I forbid your family to fail. I forbid you to bury your children. I forbid you to have an abundant project. Because God is not a man to lie. For the children be not yet born. Neither have they done any good or evil. God had already foreknown how they will end up. You see, there is nothing that catches God by surprise. He knew that you that is broke today, over time, bank managers will look for you. Now, nothing will change that. No matter the condition you are involved in now, God's word must come to pass. Yeah, the devil can only delay it, but he can't stop it. Come on. Touch your neighbor. The devil can only delay it, but he can't stop it. You are about to happen. Don't give up because the devil is about to give up. Loud and clear, say, neighbor. Don't give up because the devil is about to give up. Look to another neighbor and say to him, in the name of Jesus, don't give up because the devil is about to give up. Celebrate the word of God. You see, God's conclusion does not have to do with your beginning point. God sees the ending from the beginning. That's why he has a lot of patience for you because he knows there are times you might stumble. But he knows in the end you will stand strong. How will he send a prophet to the valley full of dry bones to meet with dry bones? He knew their end was not dry. Their end was mighty men. If you take hope out of the gospel then faith has nothing to play with. Anywhere you go to where you don't live with hope, don't get back there because they are about to terminate your faith. Faith without hope becomes an orphan. Faith without hope becomes what? Say to your neighbor, faith without hope becomes an orphan. For the children not being born, Are we there again? Having neither having done any good or evil, but that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that called it. So it means it's not by reason of what you do that determines what God does for you. Hey, aren't you glad it? So it's not by reason of what you do that determines what God does in return. Am I talking to somebody? Let this thing is the work of grace. It is not tied to what you have done, what you didn't do. It is tied to what Jesus has perfected. Anything you see yourself enjoying in God is not by your merit. It's by what Jesus had done. It's by what Jesus has done. I, don't want, to, I want to have a witness here. It's by what Jesus has done. The more you respond to me, the, just, the more Jesus gets happy. There, I say, it's by what Jesus has done. Come on, I say, it's by what Jesus has done. 
not by works lest any man should boast it is by the grace of God at the time he said I am what I am by the grace not by my connection not by my prayer not by my beauty not by my excellence or my degree I am what I am by the grace of God I want you to point at your system and say it seven times loud and clear I am what I am by the grace of God two three four five six the last one so if you are what you are by the grace of God you will become what you will be by the same grace the grace that made you can still make you the grace that gave it to you before can still give it to you not now I don't know who I'm prophesying to the grace that changed your children's life can still change your children's life the grace that changed your destiny can still change your destiny am I talking to somebody now the grace that put the devil under his feet can still put the devil under his feet there's nothing grace did before that grace cannot do again if God blessed you before he can still bless you again if he healed you before he can still heal you again when the Lord shall again turn the captivity of Zion we were like them that dream lift up us and say grace now I commend you unto God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. I have separated you and sanctified you to be. You can't be among them and become. Get thee out of your father's house so I can make you concerning Abraham. We are too used to the world system. We conform to the world system so we can be transformed to the image of the firstborn. They were unborn yet. They had not committed no offense, no good. They had not done no good, no evil, but God had concluded. Think about that. So who is here to undo what God has concluded? Uh -uh. So be of good chance. God says you are the head. And somebody says no. Whose report will you believe, Julie? Uh -uh. God had perfected, concluded what you will become. So whatever it takes God to defend his word, he had already done that by Jesus' dead resurrection and sitting at the right hand of God interceding for you. Sometimes your prayers are inadequate, but it's not only tied to what your prayer can do, it's tied to what grace can do. So you see a life that struggles to have everything, he is graceless. A life that pursues everything, he makes efforts all the time. He is not in touch with grace. I am what I am by the grace. So if I am what I am by the grace, I will become what I will be by the same grace. Grace is inexistible. Inexhaustible. But believing having faith in what God's word has said concerning you is the key Hebrews 4 and 2 the word preached unto you was the same preached unto them but the word preached was not it's not being mixed up with faith in them that heard them it is as you mean it will look like you will not become it's a lie I say it's a lie God is not a man to lie He's not a son of man to repent. Now, it doesn't matter how long it takes. May I prophesy to you and you watching me by television, you will get there. Yeah. I said you will get there. Yeah. Not of us, but of him that call it. God has not called you to serve him in vain. I want you to assure yourself, God's not called me to serve him in vain. God's not called me to serve him in vain. God has not called me to serve him in vain. But there are things you must come back with, you must fight with. There are things you must decide to put under control because there are things God will do for you and there are things you ought to be doing for yourselves. 
The problem remains when we want God to do for us both the ones we should be doing and the one he should be doing. Then that's why you have some problems. Some only remember God when they have a problem, isn't it? And that is merchandise. That is prostitution. What, that is what? That is what? Who is a prostitute? A prostitute is... That's right. Who is a prostitute? Literal meaning. Literal, who is a prostitute by literal definition? The woman that sleeps because of money. She's a prostitute. Without money, no relationship. Without a job, no relationship with God, you're a prostitute. Without a husband, no relationship with God, you're a prostitute. Without a visa in your passport, no relationship with God, you're a prostitute. You can now see that you are looking outside what prostitute, prostitution means. Meanwhile, you are, a, you are a prostitute in the church. If you say, if you give God conditions for service, you are a prostitute. So think about that if you are not. God, I'm not going to do this until you have answered my prayer. It means you're a prostitute. You need some payment for you to give some services. I want you to ask your neighbor, are you a prostitute? Tell him, thou knowest. Because nobody will answer this, but your conduct and your character has proved that you're a prostitute. A prostitute does not render services to you until she is paid for. And they used to say, money for hand? Uh-huh. Most of the times, we bring in this kind of callousness to the house of God as if it were to be said that God is a magician. Some even blame their pastor. They say, but it doesn't happen. He's a pastor. Who? Now, let me tell you the difference between you and I. is grace. God called me and chose me among you. Outside here, sometimes I behave like you. You don't understand what I'm saying now. If you look at your pastor as a God, you are in trouble. It's only God that can be God. The reason why people's faith fail is that this is what I have heard or seen from my pastor. He said, the high priest is taken from, but from among you. Would the we say don't regard your pastors? Regard them, honor them. Because honor is the key to access. But don't give them the place of God. And woe betide any pastor that stands in the place of... No, we stand in the place of God, but we don't take the place of God. He said, oh, pastor laid hands on me. And uh, I've been here one, two, three, four, five years. I've not seen results. Now, whatever church you go to, you will start from the beginning. You jump out from the queue. Now since you left that church you left, have you gotten the miracle you are looking for? You are a prostitute. You, I mean you. <laughs> and you know when you sleep with a prostitute, you are not safe. You will catch all manner of venereal diseases, both curable and incurable. God help you. Syphilis. Gonococcus. Some of you know how you treated it. You went to secret clinics. Because your faces are very known. So you have to employ a doctor. He, you pay him five times normal. You pay doctors. When big man entered trouble. He no mind travel to Japan. To take Panadol. Who will you tell you have gonococcus? How manage your wife no get gonococcus? So how you get? No, no, not you my brother. <laughs> prostitution is not safe with God if the reason you come to church is miracle you have missed the primary reason for coming to church there are things I don't ask God for anymore I get lost in him but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. In all these things shall be added. Let's become the seekers of God. And let God be bothered about our needs. If they serve me, I'll bless their bread and I'll bless their water. I will take sickness and disease away from them. If they serve me, there are very few servers.
But seek ye for the kingdom of God. Is this revelation he gave to me in Matthew 6 33? But seek ye for the kingdom of God. Is the principle of search. Say, Lord, Lord. change my smell. The ladder, the better. Say, Lord, Lord. change my smell. Any smell that attracts negativity to me, change it. Any smell that attracts shame, change it. Come on, Lord, and say, Lord, Lord. change my smell. Can I hear that amen loud? Amen. God had determined the futures of these two folks before they were formed, before they were born. They had not lived a day old. God had decided what they would become. So if I were you, I will find out what God wants for my life. So I don't walk in vain. So success in life begins with this discovery of purpose. Before they were formed, God has said it to Rebecca that the elder will serve the younger one. Now, why would you think that Rebecca will fold her hands to watch God's word not come to pass? In defense of Jacob. You only saw him as a Jacob and you concluded that God knew that he was not going to end up as a Jacob. There was an Israel in Jacob. Oh God. He was said unto her that the elder will serve the younger one. In verse 13, everybody read with me quickly. Verse 13. As if it's what? <laughs> Woo! You don't know where I'm going to. <laughs> Find out what is written concerning you and forget about what the doctors are saying. Forget about what anybody is saying. What is written is written. <laughs> but the devil can't erase it because he's not the author God is the author and the finisher of faith what is written is written he says I'm the head so I can't be the tail he said I'm blessed in the city so I can't be caused in the city am I talking to somebody here let me tell your neighbor left and right what is written is written as it is written Jacob have I loved but Esau have I hated why will God hate and God says thou shalt not hate he that hates is a murderer Jesus. <laughs> oh, oh, aga, aga. as it is written Jacob I love Esau I hate the moment God said that there is an aura he had released upon Jacob. As he has said that, there is an aura he has released upon Esau. At birth, there is an aura you come out with that equates your destiny. So that aura attracts your helpers of destiny. But if the devil changes the aura, your helpers will dislike you, will reject you, will resent you because your aura has been changed. So you are smelling not your original smell, you are smelling an adulterated smell. I change your smell. Name smells because names attract. God had prepared me for the past 10 days to change your smell. Because some of you are not carrying your original smell. When you were born, blood came out with you. So if it's not well seasoned, you carry body odor. There are some body odors, it's not because of your carelessness. It's because of lack of proper maintenance at birth. So the blood stain was not properly washed. One of the ways to have it properly done is to have elderly people to take care of the bomb baby. That's why parents go to help you. God has ordained me as your parent. Every smell you have carried that is attracting negative people to you, by Jesus' blood and the anointing, they shall be washed away. Lift up us and say, Lord, change my smell. I 
and see some young men, they have all the monies. You know, when you have a bad smell, cologne cannot kill it. Eh? What are the latest perfumes now? We have uh, Amorage, we have Avantus, Kuros. Kuros is an old school that never dies. Eh? Eternity. All manner of, but you see, when you have body odor, if, I, if you like, swim ten times a day, it has to show that it's not by power. The same thing with mouth odor. It's not like you are careless, you don't brush. But it has been ordained by Satan for your mouth to disgrace you. Some are carrying this odor, this smell, attracting. Do you know there's a way you smell, you attract battle, battle, battle. From one to, you overcome, but you keep having them. It is smell. Bottom line, God wants to replace it and release his favor. Amen. I'm not hearing your amen now. Amen. If people promised you and change their minds, it smell. It smell. If nobody wants to relate with you, it's how you smell. Some are favor dry. So what helped Jacob out? God decided to make him his favorite. And then God gave him the smell equal to his destination. So you see, when you don't have the proper positive smell equal to where you are going to, delay can be coming. Because those who are supposed to have helped you change their minds. So you struggle for everything. Somebody says, come for 100,000 naira. You get before him, he gives you 10,000 naira. If you want to complain, say, if you don't want it, give it to me. Do you know what it takes to have 10,000 naira? Are you not a man? Go and walk. Am I talking to somebody? Please lift your holy hands up and say, Lord, Lord change my smell. Now let's say, Lord, Lord, change my smell. Another man that prayed like we are going to pray in a short while was Jabez. He was born with a bad smell and that smell brought him sorrow. Bad smell can bring you bad name. Bad smell can bring you bad workers. He said, God, I know I was born sorrowful. That was the smell I came with. But you can change it. Oh, that thou might bless me. And bless me indeed. Let the blessing swallow up the sorrow. Because the blessing of the Lord make it rich and has no sorrow. I have been sorrowful until your blessing shows up. I'm tired of this smell. Change my smell. Jacob was born with a bad smell, even though with a prophetic word from God. And God says, I'm just recapping because I'm, I'm, I'm concluding. God says, to attain destiny, I got to change your smell. You are smelling Jacob, but there's another smell, customized berries that must be protruded. Israel. But you need a fight. You must fight with an angel for a change of smell. It's not just by saying, God, change my smell. Fight it. God, change my smell. He wrestled. I'm going to show you scriptures. Jesus, when he was going to be buried, the Bible said a harlot by the name Mary Magdalene. She had an expensive ointment, perfume. Very expensive. She took it and broke it. Not without complaint of Judas Iscariot. If you need a drastic smell, then you must raise a drastic sacrifice. But what is following you is determined by how you are smelling. On. Why do marriages break up? Break up some marriages break up. Some marriages after two years, the devil organizes another smell. So the man stops smelling what he smelled in the first time. So wahala. There is nothing you do if you have a bad smell that somebody appreciates. Am I still talking? Yeah. It even affects your businesses. As people get in there, begin to see they are smelling what is not there. You wager knows no smell amo. People won't help you, they smell them. 
You know, I said, who? Did you understand what I'm saying? As it is written, say with me, as it is written. Say it again, as it is written. As it is written. So it is a written thing. It is documentary. So you know, to change something that has been documented is not by what you say. You must go back to the files and change it. So if it is written, you can rewrite it. Say with me, if it is written, I can rewrite it. He said, Jacob, I have loved. Esau, I hate. So if you want to crack your brain, you will crack your brains until you die for what God has decided to do. Not just trying to do, he had completed the doing. Look at me. That's why if you want to frust be frustrated in life, compare yourself to another person. Do you know what you have succeeded in doing? You have given yourself high blood pressure. Because the person you are trying to be like is getting there effortlessly. Because it's God that is helping him. So you are trying to be like him and God is not backing you to be that. There's something that God had planned for you. I don't know if I'm still talking to ladies and gentlemen here. So if you are trying to be like someone else who is walking by grace, you will die. Even Bible says, they that compare themselves with themselves are not wise. From this day forward, whoever competes with you will die before you. Esau, I hate. Jacob, I love. Imagine you want to crack your brain to say, why would God hate one and love one? Don't ask me. When you see God, ask him. Because there are many questions you should just swallow. When we get to heaven, who are we going to see? God the Father, the Son, or the Spirit? Just make sure you get to heaven. Whoever you see, embrace them. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Now you have to be wise. You don't do like you did. In the, they did in the days of Joseph where it was so clear that the father loved J Joseph than the whole children and they ganged up against him. You must apply absolute wisdom today. Am I talking to somebody now? You don't show to one daughter you love this than her. Else there will be an, a palace coup. The one you so much love, they might end up wasting her. They, am I talking to somebody? God is not a man. <laughs> if you showed that you love this than other children, they will gang up. And the ganging up will not be good. Am I talking to somebody? I love Jacob. I hate Esau. Now watch what that one word exposed Jacob to. One word God spake opened up a battle feed for Jacob. Verse 14. Was it Jacob's fault to be loved by God? Why did he experience all the troubles he experienced? Why did he have to face all the battles? If you were not careful, you would have thought, did God really say this over me? Are you sure that prophecy is from God just because you want it to happen in your own time? It doesn't happen in your time. It happens in his time. I sense manifestation this week. Amen. Can I hear that holy amen? amen? What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? You see, somebody asked a question. The question you are asking, now somebody asked it and it was written. He said, is there unrighteousness with God? He looked at it and said, God forbid. God cannot be unrighteous. God cannot be. When God speaks, there's something on his mind that man cannot fathom out with this common sense. Why is God blessing us the way he's blessing us? It's left on God. It's not by merit. Why am I pastoring you? It's not by power. It's not by merit. 
I didn't come to your houses and put rope on your necks and drag you here even though there was heavy downpour today. You chose to come to church. You bypass so many signboards. Kalakuta anointing ministry. Oh, you go fire, fire, you go, you go power, glorious ministry. And you left all and came to Adoro, Illumi City. It must be God. It must be God, not the smoothness or eloquence of speech. No, God decided to fit you in here that you will blow some here. And I prophesy in the name of Jesus this week you will manifest. I say you will manifest. It must be God. Don't you know how happy I am? Most of my leaders have traveled for summer. In the house of pastoring people now who go to summer in America. And one told me, Daddy, from America, I will go to Dubai, Korea. I said, go. But when you are coming, don't come empty. He brought them forth also with silver and gold, and there was not one faithful among their tribes. So when you are coming, remember, we are praying for you. Mm. Yeah. Another call me, say, Papa, eh, I'm in London. Once I'm in America, once I'm going to Canada. In fact, one left for Canada, yes, two days ago. And when I came to church and I said, So all these people who said they were traveling, really traveled, say, Lord, thank you. These were those, if they saw past visa on the street before today, they wouldn't know what it is. They would think it's, it's, it's the stamp of Korea. If they saw visa five years ago, they would think say in a rubber stamp or post office stamp. Now they know how to go to the embassy, collect visa. They are going abroad for summer. You are the next. Yeah. Your amen is sleeping. You are the next. Yeah. I say you are the next. Yeah. One of my daughters saw me in the office. He said, Daddy, what God has done for me, I don't know what to do. I said, you better know what to do. He said, I want to give thanks to God. I said, you want to give thanks? He said, how do I give thanks? I said, how do you want to do it? She said, should I give in naira or dollar? I said, I don't need to think twice to let you know how to do your thanksgiving. But if I might advise, dollar makes a lot of sense. And she's in church now and wants to do her thanksgiving. So why must I not give her room to give thanks to God? Am I anti-God? The Bible says in everything give thanks. And she has here to give thanks. Hopefully in dollars. Sit down my friend. <laughs> when everybody learns to give thanks like that, it makes the work easy. It is what I'm smelling that is bringing what you are, you know, what I'm attracting. You know. I am monitious. So I spend money. I attract money. You know, hear me? So when you see people giving me dollars and pounds, now my smell. Yes, and that smell equals to favor. Yes, sir. Favor on my head? Yes. You know, when we, when, we, when we make those confessions, you think they are religious bigotries. No, they are realities. When we say favor on my head, you are saying that you are releasing the spirit of favor to come upon you. Favor on my head. Prophetic word will attract battlefields. Have I helped you? Yes. Now I'm going to give you 10 st struggles in the life of Jacob, even though prophecy came on him. God says, I will have mercy upon him that will have mercy. It is not unto him that run it. Or nor will it, but God that showeth mercy. Verse 17. For he said unto Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Verse 16. Everybody read with me. So then, it is not of him that will it, nor of him that run it, but of God. Lift your two hands and say, Lord, have mercy on me. One more time, say, Lord, have mercy on me. Have mercy on my family. Have mercy on my business. I need your mercy now. Can I hear your amen? Verse 17. For the scripture said unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose, can I say purpose? Have I raised thee up that I might show my power in thee 
and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. So God can allow something to happen to declare how powerful he is. Sickness came because he is Jehovah Rapha. God allowed you to enter into some mess so that your trust in him can be built up. There is no way you can exercise your faith without challenges. Because faith is a fighter. Faith fights, but light dominates. When light showed up, darkness checked out. But your faith has to fight. Bible says, fight the good fight of faith. I want to ask you, when last did you engage your faith into fighting? When last? When last? You can only experience God by exercising God. You can only exercise God when you exercise the word of God. When last did you engage your faith into fighting? Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Things that are of eternal value can only be attractive to you having fought. Don't watch life slipping off your hands. Fight. Don't watch the promises of God eluding you. Fight. Don't watch critics condemning your grace. Fight the good fight of faith. What makes it good? It's good because we win. It's good because we win. Come on. It's good because we win. Say it again. It's good because we win. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. You are watching Illumination Today. Miracle does not go to where it's needed. It goes to where it's been expected. So do you expect manifestation this week? No. Do you expect manifestation this week? It will happen to you. It will happen to you. It will happen to you. Lift your voice and say, Lord, mercy. God raised Pharaoh. He used Pharaoh as an experiment to declaring how powerful God is. That's why God allowed that witch or that wizard, that wicked uncle, to prove a point that they are under him. Kabayaba. Leke Prokoho. Pharaoh rose up. All those disobedience, God allowed them. Can you see God can be in your mess? Oh? I said God can be in your mess. But when God is in your mess, how do you know God will not allow the mess to mess you up? Rather, it's God will make a message out of your mess. When your mess messes you up, God is not involved. But when God is involved in your mess, he will disallow the mess from messing you up. Come on, say, my mess will not mess me up. My mess will not mesmerize me. Come on, say, my mess will not mesmerize me because God is involved with my mess. So when you are passing through hell, don't stop there. That's, not a bus, that's just a bus stop. It's not your destination. Hey, I say, when you are passing through hell, don't stop there. It's just a bus stop. It's not a destination. Help me preach to your neighbor, left and right neighbor. When you are passing through hell, don't stop there. It's just a bus stop. It's not your destination. Your mess will not mesmerize you. God will bring out a message from your mess. Can I hear a holy amen? amen. Thank you, Lord. I'm getting there now. Let me give you these 10 things that Jacob had to face because of a prophetic word. It's better you never needed one prophetic word than to think you need a prophetic word and not expect some challenges. Prophecy will expose you to challenges. When we mean prophecy is now the word of God declared over you must be confronted. Key prophecy. Key prophecy. Ezekiel 37. Son of man, can these bones leave? He said, God, thou knowest. Then God says to him, prophesy to this rival and say. So prophecy is declaring the word of God. Thou brought hear the word of God. And Jeremiah responded, I see a rod of an almond tree. 
And he says, you have seen well. I will hasten my word to perform. So friends, if you don't see well your future, God cannot make you future in the future you are not prepared for. So most of the times we see the fault of God and the fault of your prophet without you having a fault. You are not even seeing in the light of what was being said and you want God to bring about the word to pass. You see me doing this with excitement? I know where I'm going to. It will end up in praise. I say it will end up in praise. I say your condition will end up in praise. Your condition will end up in praise. I say your situation will end up in praise. That delay will end up in praise. That disappointment will end up in praise. I say it will end up in praise. Can me tell your neighbor, neighbor, in the name of Jesus, I don't know what you're passing through. It will end up in praise. Can I hear you shout Jesus? Be of good chairs. It will end up in praise. See before God confirms. Because you have seen well, I will hasten my word to perform. So God is the only performer of his word. Your greatest job is to believe that God can do his job. Your belief must remain intact in God for performance to be a lifestyle. Again, your belief must become what? Intact in God for performance to become your lifestyle. You don't bear for performance where belief is found. Blessed is she that believeth, for there shall be a performance. I speak as a billionaire before I handle the cash. Everything you need to be envied this week, receive it. Everything you need to be stronger than your enemies this week, receive it. This is a prophetic word. Everything you need for your well to bring forth waters, receive it. Everything you need to live in houses you did not build, receive it. Everything you need to have good news from far countries, receive it. Receive the blessings of Abraham in the name of Jesus. Prophecy put Jacob into a life of struggle. Jacob's life of struggle is legendary. The moment you receive a prophetic word, you become the devil's target. So nothing is wrong with you. You are just a subject of prophecy. In defense of Jacob. The moment God said, I love Jacob, hell! Open up his mouth. You know, for God so loved the word that he gave his only begotten son. Now that he has given a word that he loved Jacob, that he, there is nothing we would hold from Jacob. Hello? Hello, choir. There is nothing he will withhold from Jacob because whom God loves, he, he releases and bestows blessings on him. Jacob's life of struggle was legendary. By reason of the prophecy he gave, his life of struggle became an institution. A case study for all those who have prophecies hanging over their lives. Young man, you said, oh, you have been pastoring for three, four, five, six, seven years, and then your, your effort, the result is not commensurate. No, your current prophecy is going to happen to you like a dream. Don't hang in the trial. God is still God. He is able to bring his word to pass. Amen. Number one, struggle of a man whom God loved. The struggle to be born. Don't you think you should have thought Jacob would have been born easy like that? He would have just been born easily. No. The struggle to be born. He had to struggle. <laughs> Why was he struggling to be born? To confess. Be careful too not to try to work out prophecy. Else you will injure yourself. Because God said the elder will serve the younger. So Jacob thought it was by power or by might. So he wanted to come out first. It is not just a physical thing. Until it is consummated spiritually, then you can make it manifest. 
you have more troubles to your trouble if you want to fight it physically. Jacob struggled to come out first because even though they were not born, he was a subject of spirit. He is a spirit. So when God communicated that word to the mother, Jacob heard it wherever he was. So he wanted to come out. He did all he could to come out. The struggle started from the womb. Some of you have, you have started fighting from the womb. You are carrying that trouble from the wound. You were born without challenge. Today, I change your smell. I said, I change that smell. Come on, say, the struggle is over. Did you remember that guy in the Bible that was born lame from the womb? Born lame from the womb. Acts chapter 3. You remember in John chapter 9, he was born blind from the womb. Some were born with their predicaments. It is what God has spoken over you that brought about the struggling from the womb. The struggle to be born, number three, the struggle to be the foremost, the number one. So all that Jacob was doing to set the battery, uh, that Jesus sold his battery, yes, hey, this is for mature people. I know that Jacob sold it but they negotiated. He didn't steal it. There was a negotiation. Oh, oh, oh. He didn't steal it now. He didn't steal it. The brother said he was hungry. Jacob said, I am a son of prophecy. Let me see how to work it out. You are hungry now. Let me place demand. You need my porridge. I need your birthright. He didn't force him to give him. What you didn't force me to give to you is that stealing because is that stealing no. i came to your house you said sit down for 30 minutes i said for me to sit down give me a bottle of wine you went and brought me a bottle of wine and i sat down for 30 minutes did i steal no. so why did you call jacob a thief oh the way he came was not godly did he force you to accept his ungodliness a woman came and said, he slept with me. I will slap you again. But if you said he raped you, it's a different thing. He slept with me and he dumped me. You are stupid. You are idiot. You are a target. Now so he just sleep with you. As will be, he open your leg. You will be macho. I don't know what it is. He keeps on sleeping with women. Who complain to you? After you collect your money finish? You say go buy your motor, you know buy your motor now you can't divest. The one way he give you we hear. When when I first start and we did there, no. God will punish you. <laughs> if he raped you, then something is wrong. He slept with you. You concorded. He just switch you that time. Am I still talking to somebody? You know the shame. You know, I will, I will talk. Oh, I will talk. Oh. Talk now, foolish girl. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You gave out your birthright because you could not control your appetite for hunger. You preferred immediate gain to a long time gain. You have not thought for your future. You are shortchanged. It's all like those who sell their landed property. No matter what you face in life, don't sell your land. Because land appreciates. Instead of selling that land, sell your Range Rover. Because with time, that land will produce 10 Range Rovers for you. Una, hear me. In fact, there are some of you, even you came and gave me landed property, I returned it back to you. I said, thank you, I received it, I returned it back. The struggle to become number one. Whatever God says you will become, remember, you don't need to struggle to be it. God will raise machineries to make you become. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody now. Jacob, I know I am defending you, but you didn't need to 
ลายเจคอบ paid for his lies not for the prophecies because when the father was to die he said go get me something to eat Jacob went and brought the, the mother who heard when am I wasting your time yes, the mother was there when God said the elder will serve the younger one so she said I cannot watch God being disgraced because I know the carrier of the blessing is the one that has the future so you said no no I have to help God anytime you help God it boomerangs Sarah tried to help God and she brought forth he smell he smell smell he smell Anytime you attempt to try to help God, what we bring out, we smell. There's a bad odor. Am I preaching today? Don't try to help God. God is too powerful to require your help. Don't try it! He has something on his mind. People sleep with people to be promoted. Don't try it! Maybe God doesn't need you there for long. Don't try forgery to make money. Others might pass through it, but it might lead you to jail. And God will be happy. Somebody one time brought a check of how much? 300,000, you remember? 300,000 and we needed money then as he dropped it on the altar I saw blood on that check I called him back I said take your check why I said I saw blood on that check he said it is true he took his check that we need to eat meat does not make us call cow our brother No matter how God has a better plan for your, than your plans. Don't do what they do because you know better. To whom much is required. He struggled to become number one. The mother had to connive with Jacob. Quickly, 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 quickly. Before the father releases the blessing. And he came with it. He said, how dare you get it so quickly? He said, the Lord did it for me. He said, but this is Jacob's voice, but Esau's skin. He said, I am Esau. He lied. We will preach it in a higher level to say, there are certain faults God may not see if you are a carrier of special grace. So anybody who is trying to imitate what you do, we crumble. There is a higher level of grace that makes God not to see your fault. And others will do it, they will pay. Hey, no follow me, oh, I carry special grace. Oh. Except you have the kind of grace is imparted in you. I can slap somebody and go scot free. You, if you even touch somebody's nose, they wound jaw you. Not only wound, wound jaw. Wound and injury, wound jaw. <laughs> Julie, you understand what I'm saying? There are certain things some people do, they go scot free. There are certain graces people carry, they go scot free. Sir, Jacob lied that he was an Esau, yet the father blessed him. Yet the father blessed him. So don't use yourself to compare yourself. There are levels of graces other people enjoy. That one plot, I took it without sea of home. That one plot, you see, 20 million naira, we bought that one four, three years ago. I took it without the agreement of the owner until he now agreed by force. We started building without any agreement. He said, don't build. I said, go ahead and build. He said, they will fight me and say, I'm already a winner. He had children grown up in the army, in the Navy. Dr. Uche went there. He insulted Dr. Uche. He said, get out of my office. He said, can I call my bishop for you? He said, bishop, can he come to my office? He said, yeah, he will come. As I entered into his office, he turned and said, his lordship, his lordship. This is a man fighting us. When I got there, he was rendered handicapped. His lordship, you didn't have to come. <laughs> you didn't have to come. Why did you have to come? I said, sir, because I need your land. He said, you need my land. You're already building. If you need my land, stop building so we can talk. I said, yes, sir. I came back and said, continue building. He came back, he saw that the foundation has gone high up. He said, ah, Bishop, I thought you said, uh, I said you should cease fire. 
I said, now one day with a ceasefire. Now. We ceasefire. Build. So he said, okay, I should destroy everything. I said, sir, I'll be most eternally grateful if you will destroy everything we build. But this is people's money, and if you will do it, I will not be offended. He said, I crazy to destroy God's house. He said, the reason why I don't want to take on with you, I know what to do. But they watch you for television. If you do that, you people fall. He said, I don't want to wala. Huh? <laughs> Long story short, we bought over the land. So you now, we no get my kind grace. Nobody sees so you blow. You go carry past the land. You go here. And it is the aura I carried that Dr. Uche's medical practice for nearly 30 years did not bring. <laughs> My bishop had from God and he told me he had from God. And he said, if I did not hear from God, know that I wasn't called. Because the, the man said he was going to arrest everybody lock us up he had, he had sons in the navy and the army and i was terrified but my bishop told me i had from god and god told me to build if i disobey god i will not survive I, I needed to obey god and truly he had from god his level of grace i said if it did not happen then i'm not god said then I asked God, if they ask me where is the sea of O, what will I tell them? God said, ask Abraham, ask Moses and Joshua. When I gave them the promised land, did I give them sea of O? Yeah. My word was as good as a sea of O. If you can't trust my word, you can't trust paper. The same way I heard from God, I'm hearing from God now. You are the head and not the tail. I say you are the head and not the tail. Lift up us and Jesus! Rise up to your feet. I'll give you other points other time. We hope you've been really blessed by this message from Bishop Isaac Idahosa. For more inquiries and audiovisual messages, please call. May the Word of God enrich your soul as you continue to listen to our messages. Stay connected to God because every day is a blast. Thank you and God bless you.